Hello, I'm River, and welcome to my Devil May Cry The Bloody Palace paint series. Today, I'll be working on the Elder Garion Knight. The Elder Garion Knight, with the mounted Cavalier Angelo on his back, is the boss monster of the set. I start off by trimming the mold lines on the lance, the horns, the legs, as well as several other parts on the body, such as the cape, the underbelly of the horse, the collar on Cavalier Angelo, as well as the flaming reins that the Cavalier Angelo holds in his hand. I go ahead and I prime the model with a nice coating of the Army Painter's matte black paint. I begin base coating the model in plate mail, but I feel like that you should really just use your choice of metallic paint. Plate mail in this case is very bright and reflective, and when the entire model is coated it kind of looks like tin foil to me, but that's later mellowed out by wash and different dry brushes. I use the same color for the Cavalier Angelo. However, in hindsight, the Cavalier Angelo does have a slightly darker armor color. The head I paint the same silvery color, uh, despite the fact that the Angelo's headpiece is actually uh, black. I make sure to get all of the little metal bits, including the lance, gauntlets, and the weird sort of like bony extrusions on his weird mantle. I come back with Cambrian Crimson and use it to base coat the weird stretched flesh or bat wing that webs between his mantle's metal bits. This goes all the way around his shoulders, so just get in there. We're gonna wash it down a little later, so. With some Beholder Purple, I begin to sort of very lightly base coat the face and wherever I think the flesh would be. There are several lights on his head as well that are this color, but I just kind of brush the whole damn thing just to avoid having to try to fit it in there. I color a large portion of the lance with this watered down purple so that I may sort of later give it a effect like it's glowing. With some dark tone, I'm going to go ahead and paint every bit of the model that I've colored so far. I use a 2 to 1 wash to water ratio to make sure that the wash isn't too overpowering but still leaves a nice shadow. All of the massive amounts of silver, the webbing on the shoulders, Gotta make sure you get all the little bits all over, even behind him. His face. All of his armored pauldron parts. All of his armored bits. As well as the face of the Garion itself, and all of the bizarre little interlocking metal plates that surround its entire body. Make sure I get all the plates being a little heavier on the interior. With some frost blue, I go ahead and I begin base coating every flame that's on the creature. These flames come up as rains coming from its mouth. And I go all the way up to the cavalier's left hand. It's a little tricky to paint here just because there's so many sides. There's barding that goes down between the cavalier's legs and the horse itself. And the flames kind of wrap around it. The horns of the Garion also glow this flaming blue color. So I base coat all of that. If you choose, you may instead paint this metallic and just dry brush it blue, but that's your call. Get the eyes, as well as the tongue of the creature. Or you could leave the tongue black, but I like the color. 
I paint the flaming hooves as well, making sure that it goes up a, a bit, and then kind of begins to fade, just a little. We're go again, I'm going to be dry brushing the entire model, so. I come back with my ghostly blue, and I give it a nice little dry brush, covering all of the flames. I very generously begin my dry brush, getting all the hooves and flaming bits that are all over the model. You can see I'm much more heavy towards the base of the creature. This dry brush will act as a highlight for all the flames. I go ahead and I get all of the armored pieces near where the flames are. I think it looks I think it looks fairly good, so I go ahead and I decide to basically give the entire model a nice dry brush of this blue to differentiate it from the darker tone that is the Cavalier Angelo. You want to make sure the dry brush is a lot more heavy towards the sources of the flames, such as the bizarre horn cluster on, on top of the Garion as well as around the eyes, the flaming reins, and the hooves. You want to make sure you go against the plates so that it catches the edges. I have to refresh my brush several times for this process as there is a lot of surface area on this thing. Here I make the mistake of kind of dry brushing a little too close to where I expect the purple glow to be. I come back with my Beholder purple, and all over the Garion Knight, specifically around where the glowy bits from the Lance are, I begin giving it a purple dry brush. The armor has many little facets and various parts that break up the model's anatomy, so it's very easy to get a nice dry brush in there. It'll catch very well and appear to have a glowing effect when put next to this glowing lance. I focus more on the side facing the lance as opposed to the one away from it where he has his left hand holding the reins. I don't do it in this video, but I do go back and I adjust the color on the Angelo so that he sort of has a better portrayal of which direction the light's coming from. I give the tip of the lance a nice dry brush just so that it sticks out a little more, as well as I dot all the little lights running up his chest. come back and I just give a nice little highlight on the out facing details of his face such as his nose and lips and if you want you can dot the eyeballs highlight the knuckles and I sort of give little streaks on the lance just to break up a bit of the monotony I come back with my Cambian Crimson, and I water it down so that I can make a very light highlight on the edges of these weird webbings on his mantle. With matte black, I clean up the cape as well as the base. The cape of the Cavalier Angelo in-game is very unnoticeable and completely black, but I come back with a necromancer coat and just give it a very light dry brush over the entire cape just to kind of make it have some character to it, despite the fact that the in-game model seems to neglect it. And with that, you're done. Not a whole lot of colors went into this, but it turned out pretty good. The metal effect that you use will kind of make the light look more realistic as it kind of has an appearance of the electricity from the lance reflecting and glowing off his plate armor. There's a spot right there 
where the lance is over top of the Garion's armor, which I go back and I kind of give it a light dusting of the purple to try to give it the effect that it too is reflecting the lance, not just Cavalier himself. If you like the video, like and subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.